This is the first video in a three-part series that discusses the brain structures involved with anxiety and depression. This first video specifically looks into the different structures and their functions. This first structure is called the amygdala. It is part of the mesolimbic system, otherwise known as our reward pathway. Its main function is to process our emotions and fear and then tie in these emotional and fearful experiences to our memory. This next structure is called the hippocampus. It again is part of our mesolimbic system or reward pathway. Its main function is to both create and store our memories. This structure is called the nucleus accumbens. It is also part of our mesolimbic system or reward pathway and acts as the dopamine releasing center of the brain. This structure plays a role in associating rewarding feelings towards specific actions. I'm going to be mentioning names of different hormones, which I will discuss in more detail later in the video when we get to the medications. Next, we have the ventral pallidum. This structure is part of the mesolimbic system, and it functions to connect fibers from our basal ganglia to the thalamus in order to create an information-sharing circuit for this reward pathway. The basal ganglia is a group of structures that we will not discuss in this video, except for the fact that the ventral pallidum is one small part of this group, and it plays a role in the reward pathway. The thalamus will be discussed shortly. The orbital frontal cortex is a distinct section of the prefrontal cortex. This is yet another player in the mesolimbic system. The medial portion assesses how rewarding an action will be, while the lateral portion assesses the punishment or consequences of that action. The fornix connects the hippocampus of the mesolimbic system to the hypothalamus. As we discussed earlier, the hippocampus plays a role in creating and storing memories. We will talk about the hypothalamus shortly. The thalamus is responsible for regulating actions such as sleep, consciousness, and alertness. It also acts as a major relay base in the brain, accepting messages from other parts of the brain and then relaying those messages to other areas, such as the prefrontal cortex. Here we have the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus. These structures, along with the adrenal gland, which is not pictured, make up what is called the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. This axis plays a role in our stress response. The final step when this axis is triggered is the release of the hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is known as a stress hormone and can be elevated for prolonged periods of time when the body is in constant high stress situations, which can be seen when a person is suffering from depression. One reason why cortisol is important when discussing depression is that abnormalities in cortisol levels may affect the body's natural sleep-wake cycle, which is commonly seen with depression. The last structure we are discussing is the cingulate gyrus. The cingulate gyrus is involved in mediating the suffering and emotional components of pain. The cingulate gyrus connects the emotional limbic system of the brain to the cognitive prefrontal cortex, thus regulating affect. Affect is the expression of emotions and feelings via facial expressions, hand gestures, tone of voice, or even laughter and crying. Now that we have discussed each of the structures individually, I want to briefly talk about how the mesolimbic system specifically works. When we experience a rewarding event, dopamine neurons in the brain are activated. These neurons project to the nucleus accumbens and allow for an increase in dopamine levels to occur within our mesolimbic system. The mesolimbic system also has connections to all of the other structures involved that we just discussed. With a connection to the prefrontal cortex, this allows us to pay attention to the rewarding event. The amygdala allows us to tie in emotions to the event and begin imprinting those feelings into our memory with the help of the hippocampus.